Hi, this is Kyle Lee, Senior Construction Solutions Specialist with ATG, and we're back for another Technical Talk video. Up until this point, all of my tech talks have uh, really been focused around the Autodesk build um, module inside of the Construction Cloud Unified platform. But in today's episode, we're going to be changing things up just a little bit. Um, and, and the reason for that is because really I started moving into more of a, a technically driven role within ATG back in the 2015 um, time frame whenever Autodesk released Collaboration for Revit, which is the product that is now known as BIM Collaborate Pro. And, and it's, a, uh, it's a product that has really been uh, near to my heart for, for quite some time, and I've really seen how much it has helped to, uh, to benefit uh, a lot of our design clients here. So I've, I've always stayed active and stayed involved with that particular product, and, and also, obviously, it plays directly into the Autodesk Construction Cloud as well. And so um, we're not going to go into a, a tremendous amount of detail around um, the way BIM Collaborate Pro uh, works, but if, if you have questions about that, please feel free to reach out to us here at ATG if you need more details around BIM Collaborate Pro, how it works, and, and what it does. But essentially, what it is is it's a, a service that allows you to connect your your Revit design software um, or even possibly plant 3D or civil 3D software um, with the construction cloud. And in the case of Revit, begin to host your work shared models in the cloud versus on your server. Okay. And so, you know, one thing about the way that this always works or always has worked, and, and we're in one of my sandbox projects here, we'll take a look because I do have some cloud hosted Revit models here. Um, but the way that this works is that as teams are working inside of the Revit software and they're making changes and they're synchronizing those changes, those changes are being stored back into the central model on the cloud, but we don't start to see any of the changes reflected through the web interface until we complete what's called publishing of your model from within the Revit software. And so when you publish, that's whenever you're actually going to see different versions begin to show up on the web interface here. And that's how you're going to get the latest information that your team has um, has made in their Revit software in your Revit model, that's how you're going to get those latest versions or those latest changes to be able to be displayed through the web interface. But the reality of this is, is that, you know, most people they're working throughout the course of the day, they may be synchronizing uh, back to the central model that's hosted in the cloud here on multiple occurrences throughout the course of the day. Um, but that does not trigger an automatic publish. And, and obviously, we're in most cases, we don't have the time to synchronize the model and then immediately publish the model. So we've always had scenarios where your published versions here on the web interface that we can see right here um, are not indicative of the total number of times that a project may have been synchronized. And, and one question that has continued to come up over the years was how can we access the synced versions of our Revit model? Not the published versions that are here on the web interface, but the synchronized versions from within Revit. And, you know, up until recently, there wasn't a really efficient way to do that, although we could. We could get back to those different synchronized versions, but again, it was not a very efficient method of doing so. It could be very cumbersome to retrieve those different synchronized versions from that user's machine. But that has all changed just recently as Autodesk has um, released an update to the Revit 2022 software. And this also works in conjunction with the 2023 Revit software, where we actually have the ability from within Revit to see our different synchronized versions. And that's very important for a lot of people and for a lot of different reasons possibly as well. So we've started off here in docs inside of my sandbox project. I wanted to show you one of my Revit cloud hosted models that I have right here. This is just the Autodesk hospital architectural model. And you can see that we have eight different versions of this project file that have actually been published from Revit here into the web interface. But now, again, as I mentioned, we do have the ability to go in and access our different synchronized versions of our project files from directly within Revit. And I want to show you how we can do that today. We'll talk a little bit about why that's so important.
So first we're going to just start off by navigating to where our, uh, our project lives inside of Autodesk Docs. So we're going to go through the Autodesk Docs location here on the left hand side of the, uh, the Revit home screen. And so whenever I come in, I'm, I'm already on my, uh, my team's site and I'm in the sandbox project that we were seeing on the web interface there. So now I'll just navigate to the location where I have that architectural model saved to and that's right here. As a matter of fact, you can see that there have been some changes that have been made to the model that we could publish, but, but I don't want to publish right now. And, and also one thing I'll admit is this is a model that I haven't done a whole lot of work in, so we don't have a, an extremely high number of synchronizations. But I have seen instances where um, so, you know, some teams may only have five, six, seven published versions on the web interface, but that they may have 25 to 30 or higher synchronized versions from within the Revit software. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come into the folder where we can see our project file. Now we don't want to click on the project file right here to open it up. What we want to do is we want to come over here to the right hand side and we have the three dot more menu right here. And if we click this, now this is also the way that you have the ability to specify different work sets that you want to have opened automatically with your project or work sets that you say you don't want to have opened with your project when you open it up. But most importantly, this is where we can come down to this bottom option here where it says version history. And so now, as we notice, and I will jump back over into the web interface, as you can see here, we have eight published versions that have been published from Revit out to the web interface, but we can also see that we have 11 different synchronized versions. Okay, so there have been instances where clients have come to me and said, Kyle, we were working in um, our, our Revit model. Um, we, we made some changes to it. We went in and we removed some uh, equipment. Um, you know, we were looking at some design options, um, removed some equipment, changed some things out, synchronized back to central, uh, continued to work, um, but we didn't publish that out. And and then maybe some th some more things got changed before, and, and, and possibly we have three or four, maybe even five or six different synchronizations back to Central that happened prior to actually publishing a new version to the web interface. And so, Kyle, we need to go back in because we've, we've removed some equipment, um, we've published it out, and we can't get to that equipment through the downloads from the web interface. Um, and, and so how can we get to our synced versions to be able to possibly open that up to, to find that piece of equipment or to find that, um, you know, what may have, uh, what may have been a customized family or something like that, that was removed by a, by a user. And so now, again, as you, as I mentioned a moment ago, now we're looking at all of the different synchronized versions. And what's nice is we do still have the, the version number, um, the individual, the user that synchronized, and a date and timestamp associated with that. And as you can see here, if we uh, click on the three dot more menu, we have the ability to open or open and audit. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab this synchronized version right here, version number five. And I'm going to say I want to open this. I'm not going to worry about opening and auditing. But one of the reason that I want to go through with this process is because I want everyone to see how this opens up. This is now opening as its own individual static Revit model. It's not connected to your official cloud hosted model, the official version that's on the um, on the web interface. Oh, and we had also done a model upgrade um, between the time that that version uh, was was synchronized to where we're at now. We had upgraded the project from 2020 version to the 2022 version. And it realizes that, and so now it's opening that synchronized version, but it's also in the process of completing the upgrade, okay? And so we've all seen this before, familiar with this. Um, as we can see, you may have seen it pop up in the bottom left. It's at about 91% on the 94% uh, now on the upgrade and open. And so we're going to let that get finished up. And then we're going to point out something. one of the things that you'll see uh, specifically around the file name of the different synced versions if you need to open those up. All right. So as you can see right here, the, uh, the file is finished opening up. Um, and so, um, again, this was the previously synchronized version of the model that we went back and opened up. And so how we can tell that this is not our actual cloud hosted 
central file is if we look right up here at the top and we look at the file name and so we can see right here it tells us that this is the uh, Autodesk Hospital architectural file but then right here it starts to tell us this is from version 5 that's our synchronized version number right there it also gives us the date stamp 24th of March as well as a time stamp so that would uh, 1422 that's uh, 2 22 p.m. and then underscore detached so that again indicates that this is a totally detached totally static version of that synchronized model um, as it was at that point again it's no longer connected to your BIM 360 files so we can go in we can um, you know we can go in and we can look at the model we can go back and try to find uh, you know any of those uh, custom families that we may have put into a previously synchronized version that didn't get published out to the web interface there. Uh, and again, most importantly, this is a much more uh, efficient and effective means of being able to access those previously synchronized versions of your Revit file, even if you haven't been publishing on an extremely frequent basis there. So if you have any questions at all, uh, please feel free to reach out to us here at ATG. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Hey there, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of the other content on our channel. 